Hello and welcome to the Kilauea episode 32 live stream. Here we go. I was there last night. It was cool. It was bubbling. We saw it. We saw it building up and now she is going. It was really interesting to see. I mean, I arrived at Volcanoes yesterday right as the storm hit. And we had that co-rotating interaction region basically pop us off. And so I arrived at Volcanoes right with this first KP index of six. So that G2 storm. And uh, that went off. And then you see that the field flipped northward and actually went down, even down to like nine at one point. But it was up to 25. Nano Tesla is five times stronger than normal. Strong northward field means strong Birkeland currents in the auroral area. And then now you can see that we've re-strengthened 23, now down to 22, but still really strong uh, interplanetary magnetic field. And the field is starting to flip southward. So this is just starting to impact us because it started flipping south around 1600 UTC, now it's 1700. And so... Uh, we are going to be back in G1, G2 conditions soon. And if this drops further southward in this zone, that's going to be G3 storm. If the interplanetary magnetic field stays over 20. So that is happening. So we had Kilauea bubbling last night, pulsing up and down, up and down, up and down. And then now she started to go off with this. I turned on the live stream this morning. I saw she was bubbling. And then five minutes later, we had that. Uh, fire spout that we're seeing right now. So it can happen really quick. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really cool seeing this in action, being there, feeling the energies and more. Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We are right now in a geomagnetic storm. We had a double solar storm impact, immediately sent the KP index to a value of six from that initial shock. Things then died down. We had a three hour G1 storm that followed that three hour G2 storm. The scale rating goes to five. And then we actually went back to normal conditions, but now the solar wind strength is re-strengthening. So the total field strength is going back up and it's changing to a configuration that really causes powerful geomagnetic storms. So we're about to go back into geomagnetic storming very likely g2 levels i would not be surprised if you get g3 from this but at least g2 to come back uh from this new solar wind or this re-strengthening of the solar storm and as you'll notice here on our uh, 211 angstrom view of the sun we have our favorite coronal hole coming back for a 13th rotation this time making a triangle which is interesting so we've had this portion here be on the sun for probably about seven rotations now, this southern hemisphere portion, but it's been making these uh, sections shooting up through the equator, these trans-equatorial portions, which has been interesting. So we had this solar storm, or these two solar storms, launch from 4199. Now they're hitting us, and falling right behind is going to be this coronal hole high speed stream. And so this is important for a couple reasons. First off, this solar storm impact has been pretty fast. So the solar wind velocity immediately spiked to 600 kilometers per second. We'll look at the up to date values when we go to that screen next. Um, but what happens is it was a pretty high density and high velocity. That solar storm will sweep by us and eventually it will be in its wake. Its wake is going to continue to be a higher velocity than a solar solar wind structure and falling right in that void from that solar storm is this coronal hole high speed stream we have this pretty thick trans equatorial portion there so this is already pumping out high speed ions right they're traveling very quickly usually the minimum values that we've been getting from this coronal hole again 13th rotation now is uh, about 600 kilometers per second so this is going to be very, very fast. And because of that void, I think it's actually going to get faster. I think we're probably going to get hit with like 600, 700, maybe even 800 kilometers per second solar wind from this. We have reached values of 800 kilometers per second before. So I think that is going to occur again. 
And here we have our real time solar wind showing us this solar storm impact. So this is our three day view. Our conditions were completely normal. You see that then look at how everything increased from these solar storms. There's our KP index of six, which I mentioned. Our temperature jumped up. This is a logarithmic scale. So this is important. This is a big jump right there. Velocity went from uh, about 400 kilometers per second all the way to 650. Right now we are still at 560 kilometers per second right there. As you can see, our density is quite high at 10. It was hovering around three before this impact and now it's at 10. And you'll see the solar wind strength hovering right at the average of about five, went up to 25 at the highest. We'll see those values, 27 at the highest, wow. But we did have a big storm because the, north, the field is mostly northward. Now you see that we are in this zone. We often get this sort of structure where the solar wind will strengthen kind of in this like broad strengthening and then decline, but we see it starting to dip negative there. So negative nine, 18, that's a strong solar wind structure uh, that is going to give us a G1, G2 storm, probably G2 storm. I think it's still just now interacting with the earth, especially when you consider the fact that the earth is preconditioned from this impact. So geomagnetic volatility is already higher here than it was here. And now that we get these favorable conditions, once again, but for a longer duration time, right? This is a long duration southward um, component connection. Whereas here it's just like 30 minutes or maximum an hour, a little dip right there. This means that we're probably going to be going up to G2 conditions minimum, I would say. And here we have our uh, HP30 index real time, but we can actually go to our 10 day view right here. Yeah, this is all universal time, UTC. And so we see that increase and we'll look at our HP60 index, which is a one hour measure. This is for 10 days going all the way back to the 24th of August, right? And basically things have been quiet for about 10 days. Actually, even going before that, geomagnetic conditions have been pretty calm overall. Here's this bump up, we hit that G2 level, and now we're gonna start going back up again. The question will be, will we go beyond G2? I think it's possible, but I think we're definitely due for more G2 storming as a result of this solar wind structure. So uh, yeah, there's a lot happening right now with our environment and with space and more. If I turn off this actually, you will see Kilauea volcano erupting and turn this off as well. So Kilauea volcano is erupting with its 32nd episode right now and is looking really nice earlier this morning, earlier in the stream, but now it is um, really dusty and smoky. So it's hard to see, but basically it's just fountaining up about three, 400 feet and just spilling over. Look at all the lava oozing here. I was here yesterday, as some of you are aware, because I did a live stream from Kilauea yesterday. But before I actually went to check out Kilauea, get close and start the live stream, I did a hike around the entire, um, well, around quite a lot of Volcanoes National Park, uh, the main area. And it was like very, very interesting. But you have to consider how all this, this is lava at the surface, magma at depth, all this is very, very, very conductive. And so, because it's past this curry point where you know it melts, it loses this magnetism, but as a result of being superheated and containing a whole bunch of metallic particles and stuff, it's very, very conductive. So you have a magnetic storm. These intense magnetic vibrations are just causing the earth to undergo a ton of energy flux. And then you have the world's biggest hot spot right there, right? Already primed to go. Well, that's why I went there yesterday because I was like, I bet Kilauea is about to pop off. And well, lo and behold, last night is when it basically started with intense bubbling. And then it really spouted off this morning around 7 a.m. local time in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii right now. So this is episode 32. It did start at a lower tilt value than episode 31. That is a trend that we see at times. Uh, I can show you that data. Actually, we have our tilt data from Kilauea. And so let me pull this up. Here we are. So we see our most recent episode and actually let me refresh this at this moment in time. 
to get the absolute latest data for you. So here we have our tilt data past two days right here. We see that the uh, it's now deflating and we see our past week, we see it's deflating and we see our past month right here. So we can see that we actually have quite a lot of time left in this eruption because it's about nine right now. So it's been two hours. So at this rate, we have another two, another two, maybe five hours left, six hours left. But here we see our three month data. And so you can see that back here in early June, Kilauea was inflating. Then of course, you know, having the eruption, the episode inflating, but there's actually this downtrend. It was reaching lesser tilt values before it erupted. And then that changed right at the beginning of July, we started getting bigger inflations. Here we see the uh, magnitude, well, right there is the magnitude 7.3 from Alaska. That earthquake shows up in the tilt data. Then we also see the impulse from the magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake in Kamchatka on the 29th of July, that mega quake. Both of those show up in the data. Look at how all of a sudden all this shifted after that mega quake. I think this is very, I mean, it's a perfect clear signal. We get the mega quake, first one in four years, sixth strongest earthquake ever, biggest earthquake since 2011, which was that 9.1 great Tohoku earthquake, right? All of a sudden this like starts to act bizarrely. And then we had this huge eruption. That was episode 30. Episode 31 followed a similar pattern there with like a little bit of deflation and reinflation, but then it also dropped. But then we returned to kind of like this original zone right there with episode 32. So this maybe was a bit of a transient impulse, it's hard to say, but in general, I think that the volcanic systems in Hawaii, because of solar cycle 25 maximum, they're only gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. The entire electric field of the heliosphere is strengthening as a result of solar cycle 25 maximum. And anything within the heliosphere has that as its foundational electric field. So everything else is built on top of that. So when that changes, well, that's going to cause changes across the entire system. So we're having more microwave flux come into the planet. We're having the stronger electric gradients across the entire solar system. All the plants are going to respond to that to some degree. That does not mean that these changes are going to be like cataclysmic or anything. Uh, but there are changes unfolding and they're going to happen at the deepest parts of the earth. And Hawaii is the largest hotspot on the planet, as far as I know, or at least it's one of the most significant and one of the deepest. The composition of the uh, magma here, right? You can do samples and everything of the lava rather. It's all one the same. It is very, very indicative of a deep, deep source in the mantle, probably from the core mantle boundary. So this is really intense convective flow coming up at Hawaii. And it stands the reason that changes to deeper in the earth eventually will manifest at the surface. And Hawaii is a great place to uh, observe these changes. So we're seeing episode 32 right now, very powerful, um, not the biggest, of all of them, but certainly one of the larger ones. We had a really nice fire bow earlier, and um, we can actually look at that really quick. I wanna show you that. So, oh, maybe, actually, I'm not sure how easy that will be to do. Let me, let me see. Yeah, that's not gonna be easy to do. So, uh, I, it was earlier in the live stream, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining in on the live stream today. I've been your host, Stefan Burns, wishing each and every single one of you well. Before I sign off, let me just show you uh, the Earth Evolution store because we have a lot of products on here and uh, a lot of people ask questions about them. So it's good to be aware of our offerings. This is one way you can help support the channel. And really these products I've made uh, to help support you with your health and your wellness. And because it's just hard to find good high quality products nowadays, like it really is. And so I know that what I find is gonna be good stuff and therefore, our, because I have a channel, I can kind of right, share this all with all of you. So it's let me help you, help me, help you, that type of deal, mutual support. Uh, these tea blends are all organic, four ounces. The herbal coffee is eight ounces. We make and mix them ourselves. My dad and I uh, work on this together. It was originally me, I brought him in, he wanted to help. So these are amazing, the spirituality for meditation, yoga, 
dream enhancement, even natural travel. The herb coffee is great to drink in the morning, really boosts your creativity, your focus, and it's neuroplastic. So excellent for learning new skills. Drink a cup every single day, and that'll help you like learn new skills a lot faster. We have some merch here, the Boom Shakalaka t-shirt, the Pahoa shirt, which is what I'm wearing right now, originally called the Pirate shirt, super comfortable, stylish, uh, fits great, you can wear it hot or cold. Um, electricity, fruit tea, tranquility, vitality, all really good for your overall health and wellness. I really recommend, honestly, that you get like a pack of each and just have them in your cupboard. Fruit tea, for example, if you get sick, that's what you wanna drink. If you want something that's good for your brain and it's very similar to herb coffee, but like a good iced tea, electricity is what you wanna drink. It's like all low caffeine, like half calf, same with the herb coffee. This is 50% coffee, so it's half calf. Then the vitality is good for hormones, a little bit of an aphrodisiac, if uh, you have someone to enjoy that with. And then the tranquility is just overall good for gut health, digestion, sleep, rest, relaxation. The all around best tea blend to have just in your cabinet, it does everything. If you're sick, drink that. If you're not feeling good, drink that. There's other things too. My children's book I wrote, One Good Turtles on Bullying, the Holistic Gut Health Guide ebook, and then also the shoes are now on the store. So Hermes Magic Boots, new lower price, uh, that has been, that's men's sizing only. I'm still working on the women's sizing. Um, we have the Solar Sword tumbl Tumblers. These are awesome. I drink my coffee out of it, as you can see, and it keeps it warm. It's 20 ounce, can fit in any standard cup holder. Uh, and I like the lid, because there's no like breaking things, you know, thing slider that's gonna break on you. It's just a simple opening, but it's not gonna splash like crazy. It's never splashed for me even driving around. The women's slip-on earthing shoe, the men's Gaia earthing sandals, and then also some natural pigment art from my father. These are canvas prints we send them to. They have really good energy and feng shui. And then the men's classic earthing shoe. These are just leather shoes that have earthing capability built in. So all that's on the website, earthevolution.com slash store, available to everyone in the United States. And the earthing shoes specifically do ship international. So check that out and happy to support you all in a multitude of ways both with information with sound healings and with these sort of holistic wellness products i'm wishing each and every single one of you well feel this upsurge in earth energy i hope you're grounding yourself during this geomagnetic storm it's very important because there can be health effects from that for example common ones would be headaches or fatigue or even like dizziness, tiredness, but you can also use these energies to kind of promote athletic endeavors or exercise, go on a walk, uh, go for a swim. These sort of activities are really good to harness these enhanced energy flows and just like in general kind of boost your metabolism. So that's something that I'd recommend. Drink good clean spring water and eat whole foods. Stay away from all the pesticides and stuff. And if you breathe clean air along with that, you'll probably do pretty well. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon.